This video is the third in a series of how to set up a no rate ink account. The video series is designed for teachers, but in this case, this video is going to be for students. It's showing students how to sign up for a no rate ink account using a course code that their teacher gave them. So as a teacher, you give students your course code somehow. You write it on the whiteboard, you post it on your website, any other reliable method of giving that course code to the students. Now for a student, students go to the same place, noredink.com, their first time. They click sign up for free. As a teacher, my tip would be also post a link to this on your website if you can. Um, students remembering URLs is a little tricky. If they can do it within the context of a place they go regularly, it's way easier. So I'm a student, click I'm a student, and at this point students are going to add a class code. Um, while I do like my job as a teacher, I don't want to have everybody who watches this video as part of my class on No Red Ink. So I'm going to pause the video real quick, enter my class code, and then hit continue and show you what happens on the next step. At this page, students enter their user information and then hit sign up for a student account. I'm going to pause the video, do this, and then I'll show you what happens on the next one. The next step is going to ask students to select their grade, which is just for information purposes. Uh, teachers can still assign content to students within a particular class. So say I'm a student and I want to make things really easy on myself and I'm in eighth grade and I pick first grade, you're not going to get first grade content. The teacher still determines the content for the student. So we hit done. And this to me is one of the coolest parts of No Red Ink. And I really encourage my students to take their time when they're selecting these topics because what No Red Ink will do is use nouns from these different topics as the subjects of the questions that it asks. And a lot of times students are pretty entertained by the kind of verbs that will be matched up with the nouns of the different topics they've chosen. So you can go through and select TV shows, Disney characters, actresses, actresses. I mean, the wealth of choices is pretty impressive. They can also enter names of their friends, and they can also enter names of their pets. So one of the hardest things about teaching grammar is that what we can see from research is that really good grammar instruction happens in the context of students writing and part of the reason that is is that it hits their schema it hits what they already know because they wrote whatever it is they wrote well this kind of does that in the same way it allows students to pick things that they're familiar with so that the context of the question is not unfamiliar and so that the context of the question is engaging to the student and that way they're focused on what they need to focus on, which is learning the grammar instruction. So I'm going to go through, pick a bunch of these tiles, and notice a little meter goes up every time I pick something. And after I've picked enough things, they said, OK, thanks, OK. Students can go back and update their interest at any point, because we all know that student interests change all the time. Students watching this video, I'm sure you know that better than anybody. And when students get here, this is their home page. Now, Right now, this student has no assignments because me, the teacher, I haven't created any. Which leads us to the topic of the next tutorial in the series, which is how do I, as a teacher, go create a diagnostic for a class of students to take?